What's going on guys? Matt with MotoWorks here. And if you clicked on this video, it's because you want to know how to adjust your shim thicknesses for your motorcycle. This is, I'm going to start over. <laughs> What's going on guys? Matt with MotoWorks here. I've clicked on this video, it's because you're doing a valve adjustment and you need to know what size shims you need for your motorcycle. I threw this video together so that you guys can get an idea of the math that's involved with figuring out the shim thickness. Uh, and I found that using this technique I haven't had any problems and I actually get the right shim I need every time I use this math. Alright so what we're going to need for today is a micrometer. We'll also need the shims that are recommended and uh, pen and paper and oh this formula behind us plus for today we have a gym there's our gym so to get started the first thing we need to do is make sure we have the proper valve clearance take your time and make sure that you get the correct reading because if you don't have the correct reading it will throw off your measurements and you'll end up with the wrong shim size so caution is definitely needed there okay so now that that's out of the way let's go over how we actually use this shim adjustment uh, method all right so as you see the formula behind me we have a equals b minus c in parentheses plus d all right a is what we want the new, new shim thickness b is our me measured clearance that's what we actually measure with our feeler gauges. C is the desired clearance. That's what the manufacturer recommends. And then once we take B minus C, we then add that to D, which is the shim size that we pulled out of the motorcycle. All right, so let's go over that equation now. All right, so we need our micrometer at this point. And make sure that when we took our valve adjustment, we wrote down all the valves that were incorrect and we know where they are located on the bike so that we don't pull the wrong shim from the wrong cylinder. All right, that's important as well. So just make sure you have all that stuff in order before you start to do this valve adjustment. So all we need is the old shim and I'll just pull a shim out here for reference. All right, and if you look, this shim actually has a number written on it. All right, this one says 2.60. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure this shim with our micrometer and make sure that that number is accurate. So we'll just measure that with our micrometer there. And as you can see there, two points between 2.60, 2.0. .0. Six one, so it's it's pretty close. The one thing you want to do is make sure that these are the proper thickness before you go putting them back in your bike, because sometimes you can have a shim that might be slightly thicker than is written on here, or you might have one that's slightly thinner, and that could throw off your overall measurement. Um, so make sure that these shims are the proper thickness that is written on there. All right, so now that we went over how to actually verify our shims thickness, we're going to just do a quick uh, shim setup for you here. So we'll just pull a shim out of the bucket here. And I got a 2.25 shim here. We'll verify that with our micrometer. So 2.25. All right, we'll say that's the shim we pulled from the bike. And we'll say that this bike had a valve clearance of between 0.11 and 0.14 millimeter. We're going to be working in millimeters today because it's kind of the easiest way to do it. I understand that some people's uh, feeler gauges might only have thousandths on them and I will actually attach a link in the description below of a website you can go to where it actually converts all this for you so if that's all you have that's okay I'm just gonna go over the way you do it in millimeters because that's 
typically the way everything's measured when it comes to shims and, and things like that. Uh, and that's actually a little bit easier. So if you don't have millimeter feeler gauges, I, I recommend you go out and get some because it makes this job a lot quicker too. So here's the way we're going to do it. So we got a measurement of, we'll say, 0.18 millimeter. And then we know our shim thickness, so that's 2.25 millimeter. Now what I like to shoot for is a number that's happy between 0.11 and 0.14. So we'll go with 0.13 which would be our desired uh, valve clearance. <clears throat> so when we do the math we just take 0.18 and we subtract 0.13 and we get 0.05. Alright, so that's the number we get. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to take 0.05 and we're going to add it, 0.05, we're going to add it to 2.25 and we're going to get 2.30. This is the new shim that we want to put in the bike and by doing that it will give us the clearance that we're looking for, okay? So that's the math broken down. <clears throat> now that's if we want to go to the positive and actually add shim thickness to make this gap smaller. Okay, now we're going to do an equation where we want to make this gap larger. Okay, we're still looking for the same uh, tolerance here, but let's say our measurement this time was 0.06 millimeter. Alright, so this measurement obviously is smaller than those, but we still had the same shim size. So we still had a 2.25 millimeter shim. Alright, we still want to get the 0.13 millimeter shim. <clears throat> so we're still going to do the math the same way. We're going to take 0.06 and we're going to subtract that from 0.13 and we're going to get negative 0.07 alright to take negative 0.07 and we're going to add that to 2.25 we're going to come up with 2.18 millimeter now most of your commercial shim kits do not have a 2.18 a lot of times they'll have a 2.15 or they'll have a 2.20 now since we want this clearance to be larger, the way we can make this clearance larger is to make our shim slightly thinner. So if that's the case, in this instance I would go with a 2.15 shim and that will actually make this clearance probably closer to 0.14. When you're doing a <clears throat> shim style valve adjustment, it's actually a little bit better to have a slightly looser valve clearance than a slightly tighter valve clearance. And as with anything, after you come up with all your, your shim thicknesses and you replace it all, it's always a good bet to go back and recheck your valves and make sure that you have it right and you don't need to make other corrections. All right, as long as all that's good, Again, this is why I always do the math equation and I don't try and figure this stuff out in my head. Uh, I've never had an issue using the math equation in this form. Alright, so hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the... In the uh, <laughs> leave a comment in the section below for more videos you guys would like to see. Um, my name is Matt, this is MotorWorks, we'll see you in the next video.